Good afternoon, traders. It's Bill Baruch with Blue Line Futures, and this is what's moving. Now, much of the action came early in the session. Uh, you had major three-star support in the S&P get pinged right on, and then you had the news of a positive uh, vaccine trial with Pfizer, and that stock finished up about 3.5%. Uh, overall, that, that really uh, was the what moved the markets. And uh, you had ISM manufacturing came in better than expected, helped bring a little bit of a tailwind to uh, risk assets. Um, you know, the, the numbers, the COVID-19 numbers in California are continuing to rise at record rates. But again, it's that death rate is not following, at least yet. And, and that's really giving a sense of calm in markets. So you had that major three-star support get hit in the S&P. Um, you saw gold stall out. Safe havens traded lower. A uh, nice little washout there. And we'll show you some of the charts. But the new record close in the NASDAQ. Risk on. It's rampant. Uh, but first, non-farm payroll is tomorrow. Non-farm payroll on Thursday, yes, as it is Friday holiday session ahead of uh, the July 4th. Um, but we are doing our giveaway. Guess the non-farm payroll uh, job number. Right now, the expectations analysts are looking for about 3 million jobs gained. Remember, that's on the heels of about 2.5 million the previous month. So 3 million jobs gained is right at the, uh, the expectations. Now, you can see a link. You can sign up. It'll be under this uh, YouTube video or on our website under the video. Uh, but it's bluelinefutures.com slash guess hyphen the hyphen number and uh, if you get this in an email we'll put that on there as well uh, you could be able to get uh, pick between uh, if you're the winner between one of our uh, one of our hats as well, or uh, a polo uh, Nike polo uh, so uh, this is one of the hats here at blue line futures uh, great hat uh, so you get to choose that so let's get to it here um, now the the heat map you can see across the board you got some big moves Facebook coming back sharply after uh, Friday's you know, <laughs> Friday's bloodbath uh, but it looks at Facebook coming back strongly Amazon running higher so tech leading the way again record close in the Nasdaq healthcare looking solid but it's again it's those laggards you have the financials um, good chunk of the financials lagging industrials getting hit energy's not doing much. But you know what? The REITs, the real estate numbers, uh, real estate stocks were, were doing better. Utilities coming back a bit, too. So really a mixed board across across the board. Um, what's important to know here, too, is, is again, we, we talked about major three-star support getting hit uh, early this morning. But major three-star resistance was also hit. So the range was played very well within that. Let's take a look at that S&P chart. Um, this was the settlement from June 23rd. That settlement is 3118 and a half. We started trading lower. Uh, that, that evening reopened, so January 24th was a bloodbath. We came all the way back. Today's high, uh, 31.17.75, and right into major three-star support. I talked about this level yesterday and what's moving, um, that, that you had this momentum. It's tough to get in front of. We, we actually had some weakness early, but again, major three-star support right at 30.60 hit, and uh, you got the positive vaccine news. Good tailwinds from ISM manufacturing. And uh, in where we where we go? Right up to major three-star support. I had a non-farm payroll tomorrow. Uh, now you can take a look at the NASDAQ. Staying right out above that previous record high extremely well. We've been talking about that. A market like the NASDAQ selling off as it did and through March, coming back as it did, and now just staying so healthy above this previous record high. Pinged it early in the week, Sunday night open. And now, uh, you again, new record close out here uh and overall and what's going to stop it right now um you know you got these big tech stocks really just driving things facebook coming back really helping fuel uh, we got amazon i got amazon and apple what you know over one and a half trillion dollars each so yeah i mean it's it, what's that going to do it's it, it hurt the safe havens you got the 30-year bond getting hit late yesterday uh selling off uh, as as the market started moving very steady uh, higher um but guess what 30 years lurking around. It came off that overnight low. It's moved up here. This is a 30-minute chart. Usually, I just have daily charts. This is a 30-minute chart here. 30-year finishing on a good tick here late in the session. Uh, should be interesting to see as the S&P bounced uh, off that off that uh, resistance level. So, you know, we, we think that the the structure in the 30-year was was pretty positive over the past few days. Really, uh, a bit surprised to see how hard it was hit late yesterday. Just continued to see that that bleeding out, but. Overall, nice to see a nice positive tick here. Positive move second half of the day. It's lurking around ahead of non-farm payroll tomorrow. So interesting to see. Um, you know, again, this this recovery on the session 
in the ISM manufacturing number uh, comes after a better ISM manufacturing. Um, there, sorry, this recovery here after the ISM manufacturing number came after a better one. Um, and, and really, the dollar, I thought that was the most interesting thing on the day. Dollar acting as the safe haven also got hit after that ISM manufacturing number. Uh, you would think better data overall, better than expected data. It's still not great data. Cause it, remember, massive contractions we're working back is an expansion so we're, we're regaining ground but just a, a fact that better than expected you would imagine the u.s dollar would have saw some strength out of this instead guess what the dollar got hit down um you see how the jobs numbers are you get jobless claims as well tomorrow um but it, i i just got to believe that if we see the data continuing to be a little better and a little better and a little better the dollar is going to pay attention to that and it's move higher now you also had the fed minutes today and the fed they're going to stay accommodative. That's what they're going to do. This, this, the, the situation, especially with some of these ca- the new COVID-19 cases, uh, the steepening curve, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. You're seeing the, uh, the reopening slowed in many states, obviously the southern states that you saw these big sharp increases. So the Fed is going to stay around. Um, and, and that's where, you know, it's really kind of hurting the dollar right now, too. The fact that they, they could continue to, to do additional policy measures. But again, if the data is better we imagine and we believe in the quarter three, we're going to start to see this renewed buying in the U.S. dollar and through quarter four to be a very strong quarter for the for the U.S. dollar. So back to the charts. Um, you, the, again, here, a little bounce back here in the bond. Now let's take a look at crude oil. Um, API last night, the private survey said about, was it, eight and a half million barrel per day, sorry, eight and a half million barrel draw. Uh, and, and this number was from the EIA, the official number, not quite there. Um, but still a, a massive draw, supportive prices. It, it's, you know, after a big steep rally, it's kind of just hanging around this trend line, trying to find direction, but the direction is still up. I mean, the momentum, the, the, the direction in this move high is higher. So as it's consolidating, it's, it's just a buoyant consolidation. Now you got this big resistance level this overhead is, is, is lurking, 42, 30. So keep an eye on what this does from here. We had major three-star support in the, in the in crude oil, about just below 37 bucks. Pinked it last week. Been a constructive consolidation higher. It's, it's staying and trying to find direction there. Um, we still see little value trying to sque- squeeze that out. We would really like to find a buying opportunity closer to $30, $31. I mean, even even 33 and a half we consider, but something in this region here. Um, you know, as it comes in, it's just it's tough to find the value here. There was no increase in um, in, in production, uh, so it's pretty flat. You're seeing some rig numbers that, that the, the drops have been slowed, but I mean, at this point, was it 188 or so rigs are still left? So how many more can really fall off at this point? But but we would be would not be surprised to see rigs start to come back on as at these levels they can hedge production. So uh, let's move on here to gold. Now, this is disappointing. Before I jump into the chart here, listen, I, I did a metals focus video yesterday, talked about gold. I love gold. We've been bullish gold for years. Uh, really got extremely bulled up going back, what was that, August 2017 low. We've been, I've been talking, my phrase, unequivocally bullish long term gold. And this is great to see. I said specifically here yesterday, you can't chase gold. I, I, I did believe, yeah, there's a nice little breakout occurring. But I always say our narrative is, you do not want to chase gold when everybody's screaming for it. You want to be capitalizing. That's when you want to be capitalizing on gold that you already own. So did I think gold was going to turn around today like it did? No. The vaccine news really hammered it. And when we've had days where this the positive vaccine trials are hit the headlines, yeah, gold gets smoked. And um, this breakout stalled. But if you look at the charts, um, even though it got up there, there's still resistance 1804.4. Uh, previous high back was in, was in November 2012. And then silver, that's the thing. Silver really started driving things as it moved uh, earlier in the week, held ground, moved early yesterday, and gold gold joined the party. Silver and, did it, and gold did it together. But silver can't get above $19. And this looks like it's just remaining capped. And that's, you know, let's take a look at the chart, but that's really what's, what's holding it back. So still gold, extremely constructive. This is the continuous breakout. I pinged it last Friday. That was a major three-star support. Um, so we, we, we see gold being constructive across intermediate long-term time frames above here. Today, today was constructive close, settlement, right? Holding 1780 was, was good to see. That's about unchanged on the week. Tomorrow was going to be important. See how the week finishes up. 
Uh, but silver, look at this. I mean, silver, this is the resistance trend line. It just cannot go back up there. It can't, I mean, it can't break out above there. That's where it's struggling. We need to see a decisive kind of move through here, really get going. But what can do that? You got the 50-day moving average moving to the 200, and that's going to bring that tailwind, we, we would imagine. So that could help get silver out above there and bring that tailwind. Now, lastly, with the currencies, the euro, nice little consolidation. Um, today it was weaker early, came back strongly again. They said the dollar lost ground significantly. Um, you know, as uh, as ISM was better, as the vaccine news was there, all weighed on the dollar. And so you got just obviously comments coming to the ECB as well, uh, and, uh, Lagarde commenting. So got the 50-day moving out above the 200-day. So that's that is something that can be supportive to the euro. You know, we're not we're not denying that. So keep that in mind, manage your risk and knowing that, keeping an eye on that. Uh, lastly, take a look at the Aussie dollar. So got a lot of lines drawn on here, but you know, what I really want to emphasize with this, same thing I showed in the crude oil, directional move higher. This direction is now, is, it's sort of, it's a sideways consolidation. This immediate uptrend, immediate trend line is now is now out. So you take these out, however you want to draw, draw from the lows or from the, from the cut off the tails. Now we're consolidating here. You do have the 50 day moving average crossing above the 200 and that's bringing a tailwind, but you now you also have this consolidation pocket, which I, I see as being, we're gonna get a directional move here. Tomorrow's gonna to be pretty pretty critical on it. We think there's good resistance up here. It started showing early signs of stalling, like it did not wanna go and move out above there, um, but it, it, uh, the weaker US dollar, I mean, you, it's hard to think that, you, again, you have better data in the US and the U.S. dollar doesn't rally on that. Uh, you, we, we think that those, it said it took the safe haven tailwinds out of it. So, or any you know safe haven buying out of it. So, um, we, again, we think that the better data is going to play into the U.S. dollar into quarter three, into quarter four. It's going to work. Uh, but I, I would find it very hard to believe that if we get a better non-farm payroll report tomorrow, that the U.S. dollar is not going to rally a bit on it. So keep a close eye on that. Again, uh, sign up. On uh, our website, on this Blue Light Futures hack, you can pick from your two hats you can, uh, we have. Pick a polo we got. Guess the number. You'll find the link there. Uh, give us a call, though. We'd love to talk to you about any markets you're watching. Strategies execute. We got uh, letter of direction strategies, but basically manage options programs. Um, so uh, check it out. Give us a call. Want to learn more about it. 312-278-0500. Uh, though, remember, futures trading involves a substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors.